Welcome to the review of Norton Utilities. Norton Utilities was created by Peter Norton of Peter Norton Computing in 1982. I'm going to be reviewing the last DOS release, which was version 7. So the first thing I'm doing is going into the Norton Utilities main program. Here you can set all kinds of different settings with the graphical interface, such as your screen colors to use the number of display lines to display in DOS and, and other miscellaneous configurations. For example, here we can see a list of programs to start up when DOS boots. These are of course found in the config.sys and autoexec.batch files. This just makes it easier to maintain. You can also set passwords to execute and control settings for the various Norton utilities. The nuconfig program gives you the ability to create a rescue disk. After choosing your diskette type, you then choose the types of things to back up, such as your CMOS data, your boot record, partition information, and also it includes the utilities that it copies to the diskette for you. Very valuable for doing computer repair back in the day. So here we created a disk and you can see what is on the diskette. The next utility I'm going to talk about is called S format. The S stands for safe. So this program had all kinds of options. Basically what the tool does is allow you to recover the data that was on the drive that you format in case you accidentally do it by mistake. You'll notice toward the bottom it has save image info checked. So you can have the option to say leave the space for system files or put them on the disk or do not. If you do the no option then you can save the image info. The next tool we're going to talk about is called SmartCan. It's basically like an early version of the Windows Recycle Bin. It allows you to save files into a special area when they're deleted. This, of course, guarantees that you'll be able to unerase them without having any kind of problems. So I just deleted an INI file and now I'm using the unerase program that comes with Norton. And you can see that the status to unerase or the prognosis is excellent. You simply type in the first character and the file is back. Next we have sysinfo. This gives all kinds of information about your computer system. So here's a high level overview as you can see. And this describes our video capabilities. Allows you to browse the hardware interrupts as well as software interrupts. Here we can see some various CMOS values. It also does some testing as you can see. And then it gives a quick summary of all the different available disks. Then you can look at specifics for each disk as well. Here we're getting a list of all the memory and capabilities there. And back in the day when DOS was around, we had either expanded memory or extended memory. 
so it gives information about those as well and it shows you a breakdown of what is in memory in DOS you can even get a list of the TSR or terminate and state resident programs that are running as well as device drivers one of the first things you would do once you got Norton Utilities was run the benchmark to see where your CPU stood versus other CPUs of the day so here you can see we have basically a gigahertz machine and the Norton Utilities since it was made way back then didn't have any idea how to handle it so it just said 999 megahertz so you can also do a disk test but because I'm running inside VMware it said that there was an advanced controller doing caching so it couldn't really do a true test on the disk but if you did not have an advanced controller or caching enabled it would give you an accurate measurement it's kind of ironic that it's showing this computer isn't nearly as good as a 46 333 megahertz because obviously that's not true okay the next tool we're gonna look at is text search and this allows you to actually look for text contents inside files and it will display the results so here I'm gonna look for the word Tetris and it's asking if you want to copy the results into a specific file we're looking for Tetris and it's searching the C drive and there it found it it shows the cluster number and exactly where it's at so now we'll move on to unformat which you can do if you've accidentally formatted a drive and you didn't mean to do so so there we go we just unformatted a drive if you had used the image command before you did that then you're guaranteed to get it back otherwise there's no guarantee but as you can see I can undelete some files that were on the drive so it was indeed unformatted next up is a program called wipe info it allows you to protect by deleting information securely so you can either wipe everything on the drive or you can just wipe the free space and basically there's different ways you can configure it if we go into the configuration by default it just overwrites with zeros but you can also do a government wipe which is much more detailed so all we have to do is pick the drive tell it to wipe and you can see it first starts to write some zeros then it overwrites again with ones zeros and ones again does this total of three times and then it writes the value 246 across everything and then it verified that it did it correctly and it's done our next tool is called batch file enhancer which just allows you to make glorified batch files the next utility we're gonna look at is called calibrate and basically it's a disk system optimizer it'll also detect if there's errors on the disk and try to move the data on those damaged sectors somewhere else if possible 
So it just runs the system through a whole slew of tests. It also tests the memory, the controller of the hard drive, all kinds of things. It even tests the high-speed timer to make sure it's working properly. And that little graphic was a demonstration of where the read-write heads were going on the drive. And once again it tells us we have an advanced hard drive controller or a cache. So the speed performance of the drive is already set to maximum. It can't do anything about it. So now we can do a test to see if the hard disk is having any kinds of problems or if it is working properly. So here we just did the five patterns in order to make it faster. And then we're given a nice little report that we can either print or save. And that's that. Now I'm going to show you a very advanced tool called Disk Editor. You could get yourself in a lot of trouble with this program. Therefore, by default, it starts in read-only mode. Essentially what it does is allows you to view every single bit individually on the hard drive itself. It allows you to do it based on all kinds of different views. Here we're looking at the clusters themselves. Now we're taking a look at the file names, but you'll notice it shows you the cluster or the sector that it begins. And then finally you can view inside a hex editor the actual contents of that sector. You can also change a directory pretty easily in case you get lost. Or you can tell it to go to particular sector ranges if you want to narrow in on a given sector. Here it was smart enough to default us to a boot sector type view. It tried to figure out where you're going and trying to make it easier on you. That's the partition table. Here's the boot record data on that sector. You can look at the file allocation table or FAT. It shows you essentially the different clusters and if the file has an end of file indicator. Give some basic information about the disk. Under the view menu you can change it to view for example as a boot sector and then no matter what sector you're on it's going to show the boot information for it which of course isn't normally valid but it still allows you to do it so you can see this is very advanced you have to really know what you're doing so that you don't mess things up here we're going into the edit disk parameters menu where you could update information about the number of bytes per sector, sectors per cluster, etc. You can also get a memory dump of everything that was in memory. Really cool. You could see where things were loaded, how they were loaded, and there is the memory dump. It even has the capability to search 
So here I'm looking for the word barred, and there it found it. And then we know exactly where it was at. So the next utility is called Disk Monitor. The first feature is the ability to protect your disk from access that you have not authorized. By default, it's going to do system areas. You can choose just any type of file, or you could say the entire disk. And when the status is set to on, you are protected. There was also a nice little disk light that would flash on the screen anytime the disk was being accessed. Great for network drives. And you could also park the disk, which moved the heads to the beginning. That was in case you were going to move your computer back then and the drive didn't automatically park itself. So here I'm copying a file, and then I just wanted to turn around and delete it. And you'll notice Disk Monitor tells me it's protected. And then I get prompted whether I want to allow it or not. So that time I denied it, and you can see Delete failed. That time it was successful. Next up is an encryption tool that was way ahead of its time. It was called Disk Read. And what we have to do, first of all, is load the discrete driver into the config.sys. Now, you could have used the startup program's configuration to do this. But, of course, I wanted to use a text editor and show you how to do it manually. Once again, Disk Monitor was trying to help us there. So I allowed it, rebooted the computer. Now, discrete is loaded and we have the ability to use it. So the first thing you want to do is create an end disk, which essentially is like a giant file that is going to be treated like a real drive. So we're going to put it on the D drive, and we're going to use government standard DES encryption. The other type of encryption would be cracked pretty quickly I'm sure. And I know there were some vulnerabilities in this software that people discovered at a later time, but at the time that was not known. So then we give a description to the end disk, and we tell it what drive letter we want. We'll just leave it as F then, of course, you provide a password. have to have the password in order to open the drive. I've enabled auditing, so it'll show you anytime somebody does something with the end disk. So I closed it, and now I'm trying to reopen, and it wants the password. And you'll notice it showed two open attempts. Now I closed it, and once again reopened and the count is now three. So now I can go to the F drive and if you notice it's the exact size that I specified. So I can copy files to this as many times as I want. It's treated just like a normal drive. So I'm going to copy the autoexec.bat and you can see there it is. I also put the config sys there. It's just treated just like a normal drive. Now what happens if I close the disk and try to go there? There, it acts like it's failed. If you look in the root of the drive where I put the end disk, you'll see that giant file here called end disk 2 and it's got a weird extension on it. Essentially it's just a giant file that's encrypted. So here I'm going to bring it up in a text editor and there you can see the contents. Since I'm using DRDOS 6.0's editor, it doesn't display it very friendly. It see a bunch of control characters there, like control Y. That's just how it's interpreting the binary data. So once again, we'll go back into disk read. We will open the drive. It warned us that that file was now visible because I had removed the hidden attributes and I type an invalid password, and you'll notice the audit caught it. It says total failed attempts was one, 
and it shows the last time someone tried to open it. There it is once you successfully put in the right password. Okay, so the next tool to talk about is called Disk Tools. Just some simple things to you can make a disk bootable, recover from DOS's recover, revive a defective diskette, which could be very useful, or mark a cluster as bad. So here I'm going to go through the process of marking a cluster as bad. This will prevent DOS from using it. So you choose the drive and you just put in the cluster number. It's that easy. If there was a file there and it is readable, it will move it to a new cluster. Now one program that I find very fascinating is called Disk Sort. It allows you to change the default view or disk sorting when doing a DIR in a given directory. So here we can say sort by extension first, then by date, then by size. And you can also tell it to do subdirectories by checking that box. So I'm going to change to the drdos folder and I'm going to resort that directory. You do it by doing the right command, but first you can do the resort so you can see what it's going to look like before you actually perform the sort on the disk. So when you're ready, hit right, and that's it. So now we can change to the directory and do a DIR listing, and sure enough, look at that. It has organized it by extension first. Next is dupe disk, which is just a simple copy disk function. Do the source, do the target, and that's it. We have FA, which allows us to get a friendlier view of file attributes. Much more powerful than DOS is a trib program. It allows you to actually work on subdirectories. Next, we have FD, or file date, allows us to set the date and time on files quite easily. There, we just updated to the current timestamp. We have a file find program, which is capable of looking at the contents. So we're going to look for the word IBM across the entire disk and it will find the actual file names that have that. As you can see, there's quite a few. Another fascinating program is called File Fix, which allows you to try to get back some damaged or corrupt files that are under certain formats. Of course, the formats that it allowed you to choose were pretty limited. We have FL, which just locates a certain file based on its name or other attributes. We have FS, which gives file size, and you can actually have it recursively search based on your wildcards or whatever parameters you specify and here I'm doing a subdirectory and it'll add up and give you the total amount of space the files are taking up as well as the slack. Slack meaning it's not fully using the sectors. They're just there's a lot of wasted space essentially. The image program allows you to capture a snapshot or an image of a given drive so that then you could restore it. We have the line print program, which allows you to print a given file to another file and kind of format it to a specific printer. It's kind of like a virtual printer. So here I'm going to print the contents, pipe it into more so that I can pause it. And you'll notice that there's line numbers 
because that's what I told the printer to do. And it also shows page two there at the top, so it's split it up in the separate pages. Next up is the end cache, which is essentially a disk cache for Norton. And it had gains of about 10 to 50 percent over Microsoft's speed disk disk cache if you properly configure it. So you have to, of course, install it as a TSR before you can use it. Next we are going to look at the Norton Control Center which just has a bunch of miscellaneous type utilities. A lot of them geared toward the DOS command prompt and graphical and things of that nature. Here you can see you can change the DOS colors so that it'll look totally different at the command prompt. Instead of the boring white on black, we can make something much more enjoyable or something equally as ugly. You can change the palette colors that it's going to use for the DOS colors. So back in the day when you had EGA graphics or VGA, you had to set a palette most of the time to know which range of colors to use. Next up is NDIAGS, which is Norton Diagnostics. And this is just going to run a whole slew of tests on your hardware and different capabilities of your system. So overall, Norton Utilities was a fantastic set of tools. It was almost priceless. If you owned a computer back in the 80s or early 90s, this set of tools would help you tremendously. But you had to really know what you were doing or you could get yourself in trouble. So I hope you enjoyed this review of Norton 7.0, and I'll see you next time.